I just wanted to do a demo of the project for EC547 or 447. Um, here's my uh, test setup at home showing the, the tracking. So right now I'm doing a small scale version of like the theater. So I'm, I gave the hex plot here the same dynamics as the two-wheeled rover. Um, and it's being tracked with a camera which is way up at the top on top of the tripod and the camera is connected to this computer over here which is connected through the ethernet cord which you can see on the, the left side to the network and the computer doing the common filter is over here so this is a close-up shot of the computer that's running AR toolkit doing tracking and it's also currently communicating with the computer over there through sockets um, so this computer is processing the image and then figuring out the, the location of the marker and then um, transmitting that information over to the computer. So I put a marker on top of the hex pod um, and the camera is way up high so it's an overhead view which is similar to how we have it in the theater. Um, so you can see how it's drawing the marker on there and if I move this around um, it, it, it tracks pretty well if I spin it. Now whenever a leg gets in the way um, it won't be able to, to detect the marker because it needs to see the full marker. Um, but this is similar to like in a theater how you have objects coming in front and you might it might be blocking um, where the the visibility of the marker. Um, but fortunately the encoders take over that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the hex pod up. So all the motors are initializing, now it's just going to stand up. And I have a little bit better visibility of that marker on top. So I simulated the dynamics of the skid steer. So the two wheel, it should be the same as the two wheeled rover design. Um, and I used the a PlayStation controller to operate it. Um, I put the pivot points at each, um, at the, at the point of each leg. So one down here and one over here. So it's a simulated length, um, and the left joystick operates the left side, the right joystick operates the right side. So if I move the right stick, it'll pretty much pivot on the left foot. Now it walks a little bit slower than, um, than how the rovers will go, but at least it, it simulates the dynamics. So yeah, if I push them both back, then it goes back, both forward. And similarly, I can rotate. So definitely not the most ideal way to, to walk a hex pod, but it simulates the rover. And the nice thing about the hex pod is that the um, the, the top kind of shakes a little bit, so you can imagine if you're driving the rover, maybe if you hit something bumpy or people j are jumping on top of it, the, the marker on top isn't always going to be nice and level. So if it works for this, then hopefully it should work for the rovers. So here's a demonstration of how the sockets work. So again, the computer on the right it has AR Toolkit. It's computing the location and the orientation of the marker. Then it's streaming the information using sockets um, over the network to the computer on the left, which has a simulation. So you can kind of see uh, that we kind of drew out the stage on the simulation, and then this is a representation of the location of the robot on the stage. Um, so there's there's actually two markers on here um, that they're kind of on top of each other. Um, so the all you see is the white marker. The white marker is supposed to be the estimate. That's the output of the common filter, and the red marker on there is the uh, is the raw information computed from Air Toolkit. So let me just go ahead and move around. Yeah. So you can see if I move the the robot, then the marker follows. It follows it pretty well. So the more I move it, the the more you can see the uh, the the difference between the red and the and the white circle. So again, the white circle is the f filter and output of the uh, of the, the
the sensed information. So I lost track of it there just because the, the marker wasn't very visible. Yeah, so it, it loses track there, but then when it does gain track, then it, you know, it comes right back onto it. And again, there's no encoder information going on right now because the hex pod isn't walking around. So right now it's pretty limited to just uh, sensing what the, what the camera can see. All right, here's a quick clip showing everything in action. Now, it's, it's kind of hard to show you it all working together, but I'm controlling it with the, uh, the PlayStation, PlayStation controller. And the, the camera, I can't bring that down the AR Toolkit computer because some of the wires are too short, but, the, but that computer is streaming the, the marker locations from AR Toolkit over sockets. Um, and the MacBook over there is fusing it all together with the common filter to, to make that nice uh, white marker that you see on there, which is the, the final common filtered output. Now there are some numerical errors, which will take a couple of little if statements to, to correct, so hopefully I'll get to those. Um, yeah, like there's another numerical error when, it, when the angle gets past the zero point. Um, so this is tracking the marker very well, but when this actually gets implemented, um, what becomes more interesting is what happens when, the, when you're unable to see the marker. So I can easily obstruct the view of the marker by throwing on an object. So now it can't see the marker at all. So now it's relying completely on encoder information. So you can see how that red circle, well you can barely, hardly see it, um, there's a red circle that shows the last bit of camera information. So now it's the white circle. It's, it's much more smooth because that's, it's going purely off of encoder information. Now, it's accurate for a little bit, but it gets a little bit far off the, the further you go. But once it can see the marker again, then you, you saw that there was a little bit of correction. Um, so it doesn't need to see the marker all the time. As long as it picks it up here and there, then it can kind of correct the location of the robot. So this is very similar to, for example, if somebody were to slide or like kick the rover, then it can easily reacquire the location. So there you go.